freedom. The final area of this training, we'll look into processing requests. This is what you do to work on and complete a request once it's been received. Go to the request management tab. We'll work on Mickey's printer problem. As soon as you open it up, you've got the subject and the description right in the center of the screen. Just above that, we can see that Mickey Mouse raised a request on the 6th of December. If you follow that to the right, you've got a due date. This means an SLA has been assigned to this request. It can be a service catalog SLA or it can be an incident template SLA. Just be aware you're going to be timed. Above that, you've got an open status and a priority. Going back to the left, we've got the requester ID and the subject. Got a few controls here as well, which we'll get to very shortly. And you've got various tabs for details on the request. Below all that, we've got requester conversations, the emails to and from the requester. And we've got request details. These are all the fields you filled in when you created the request. And we'll hold it together in a nice mess for you. The final area of information is the requester details at the bottom with Mickey's contact number and department. That's the request layout. Let's look at making some amendments. We've got to the request details. You've got a few options for this. You can amend the fields individually by clicking on the values. If you make a change, it will save automatically. If you don't make a change, you can exit with a crosshair. Alternatively, you can edit the whole area of data by clicking on this button here. And you can make as many amendments as you want, but you need to update once you've done that. Final way to edit the request is to edit the whole request as if you were creating it. If you click the edit button towards the top, it brings it up as the input form when it was originally created. Can make amendments here and then go down to the bottom to update the request. Requester conversations are all the emails going to and from the service desk. Look at the example on screen, we've got two emails, one going out one coming in. The first one from the system, click on the little button to the left hand side, drops down and we can see the summary and the description. We can determine that the email was a notification of the request being created. We drop that one back up. The second email was a reply from Mickey. If we look down, we can see the description. He said it's his own message saying, Can you please help me? To send emails out, if we go to the top right hand corner, you've got a reply tab. Under here, you can reply to the requester, you can forward the request down to somebody else, you can email a technician that's looking into the request, or you can SMS it to technician. We'll send an email. We'll send a reply to Mickey. Okay, you've got a two field. You can add other people from Active Directory, or you can add other people if you know the, if you know the email offhand. Subject, you can amend this. You can also use a template for the description. This is the first email Mickey's going to get, so we'll do a first response email to let him know that we're working on the request. Just add his name. You can also add an attachment, and we can send it out. There we go. Refresh the page. We've got the email coming out, and this time it's from the technician, not the system. Let's go back to our slides and have a look at the email notifications and see which ones are automated and which ones are manual. Look at the flow. When we get to recording basic details, you will have an automated email coming from the system to notify the requester that the request has been created. Following up, when we get to the investigation part, It'll be down to the technician to send out a notification of response to respond that they are working on the, the request. We've got a template sent, set up for this, so it shouldn't be too difficult. After that, part of the investigation, any updates will need to be manually sent out by the technician. These are classed as manual replies. And then finally, an automated email will be sent out 
when a resolution has been created. The trigger for this automated email is the first time that a status is changed to resolved. When it hits that and it's saved, the email will be sent out to the requester. Okay, that's requester conversations. Let's have a look at reassigning a call now. There's two ways to do this. The first way is to go to the request details and manually edit, which will therefore reassign it to another technician. If you just click on the value, you can change the group, you can change the technician, and then you can click the tick to save it. The other option is to use the command at the top. If you drop it down, you've got two options. You can pick it up. So if this wasn't your request, it would reassign it to yourself. Or you can assign it by clicking on this. It brings up another window, and you've got the options to assign it to somebody else. Let's look at tasks. There is a tab for this, but it will only appear when a task has been assigned to the request. You can create a task by going to the Actions drop-down and clicking Add Task. The task will need a title, and you can add a description if you want. You've got a schedule start and end time. The end time will be used for any scheduler calendar display. So the one on the home screen, your task will populate in there to let you know that you need to do a, a task by a certain time. You've also got an actual start and end time for the technician to fill in as they complete it. You can assign it to somebody else. If you do assign it to another person when it's your request, the system will send an email to that technician letting them know that a task has been assigned to them. If you sign it to yourself, that email will not send out. Let's assign this one to me. Okay, you've got a status. That will need to be closed for you to then close the request off altogether. You can't close a request with an ta outstanding task. You can add comments and um, you can get the system to email you. Work logs work in a similar way, but as a task is something that you need to do, a work log is something that you have done. This is just about the time you spent on the request and any additional costs. One thing to note is that both tasks and work logs will never be visible to the requester. There is no way for the requester to see it through any email notifications or via the self-service portal. These are very private to all the technicians working on them. We can add a work log in two ways. We can click the button there, or we can go to the actions again and add a work log. Again, this comes up. Just simply enter how much time you spent on it, any description you've got, and any additional costs. Save, and then that will save to the request. If there is something you want the requester to see, you need to do this by adding a note to the request. This is something the requesters can do themselves when they log into the self-service portal. To do this, if you go to the Actions tab again, this time add notes, create your note. By default, the system will make the notes private. So for the requester to see them, you'll need to take the show this note to request it as also. You can also email the technician for any additional notes. Add the note, and it pops up towards the bottom of the request. Just two more tabs to look at. The first one is History. This is the life of the request with all the updates that technicians and requesters have made to it. Resolution tab, this starts off with a search solutions option. Clicking on this, we'll use the subject line of the request and search solutions management for any solutions that have been presented. I would advise not to use this option because there's a bug with how the system searches. If you include any words such as and or or in the subject line of the request, the system will fall over and not return any results. I'd advise to go into solutions management and do a manual search and just enter keywords specific to that request. Moving on, the next area is for the actual resolution. Make this as detailed as possible. You can also do a spell check and even add pictures to it. Once you've created a, a resolution, you then can set a status. We go back to the email scenario. If you set this status to resolved, this will mean that an automatic email will be sent out to the requester informing them of the resolution and that the call has been resolved. The final option to this area is you can add a work log. 
So if you haven't been creating work logs throughout the request, here you can add a, a final work log to include all your time and any costs that have occurred. After that, save. And the request will save to resolved. You can then go to details. If the request is happy, you can change that status to closed. Okay, before we close off, let's do a quick recap of everything that you should have learned in this training session. We looked at request management and the data flow process that the requests follow as they go through the module. We looked at the interface and how to manage your request better. We then looked at how to create the requests and specifically the two core types for service catalogs and incident templates. We then finished off with processing the requests with regards to reassigning, doing all the notes and finding a resolution. I hope this training session has been helpful to you. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.